Before we start, special shout out to Zero to Hero Productions for allowing me to use their streaming footage for the Spider-Man PS4 section. Go check out their channel, they're pretty cool. Anyways, on with the video. Before you ask, yes, I am making a Spider-Man video immediately after the other one. Why? Um, I don't know, I just kind of felt like it. When you think of the word Spider-Man and video game, odds are the first thing that comes to mind is Insomniac Spider-Man games. You're not thinking about Web of Shadows, you're not thinking about the Spider-Man 2 movie game, you're not thinking about Ultimate Spider-Man unless you're a real one, you shouldn't be thinking about Friend or Foe, and if you're thinking about the Spider-Man 2 movie tie-in game for the PC, I am so sorry. Much like the Batman Arkham games, Insomniac Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales are widely successful and acclaimed as the definitive game for the title character as of right now. And with the sequel releasing next month, the hype is through the roof. Look at all the discussions surrounding the game online. That was a joke. Please do not look up anything about Spider-Man online at all. The Spider-Man community is a disaster. You are, you are better off for it. You are, you are way better off for it. Anyways, I thought I would take a look back at the previous two entries and somewhat piece together from the gameplay to the story why they work not only as video games, but as great Spider-Man stories. This game is good. Uh, obviously, like, I, th there's no debate, Spider-Man PS4 is really good. First of all, let's talk about the gameplay. The goal the team set out to accomplish regarding traversal was to keep the player moving no matter what happened, which is why the R2 trigger is the parkour mode, what you use for the web swinging, wall running, and automatically leaping and vaulting around obstacles. On one hand, it looks cool and feels good to wall run and be acrobatic. But on the other hand, the web swinging isn't that complicated to master, which makes it feel almost brain dead. For me, it's a good way to relax and turn my brain off for a moment, but for those looking for something more involved, this might be a bit of a downer. The combat is good, but it has the same problem with the Arkham games with pressing two buttons at most, except sometimes you're pressing triangle to get up close to an enemy far away. Peter does have a gadget wheel with tools to spice up combat, such as the electric webbing, web bomb, and the suspension matrix. Holy mother god, what the fuck? But to be honest, you don't really need them unless you have to use them to progress the story. Of course, the Alternate suits are fantastic, lovingly recreated, and the suit powers are really sick. My favorite is the quip one. I hope you know why. My favorite part of this game, really both of these games, is the photo mode. I know, I know, a bit silly, but I like taking pictures of Spider-Man. I don't know, I guess I'm something of a video game photographer myself. Why are you booing me? Why are you booing me? Stop it! Oh my god! Okay, but who gives a shit about the gameplay? Let's talk about the story. The tagline for Spider-Man PS4 is Be Greater, a play on the classic Great Power Comes Great Responsibility motto. However, when you look at the game's narrative as a whole and what questions and themes are explored, this simple marketing line turns into the central question of the story. What does it mean to be greater? Everyone perceives themselves in the story as less than what they could be. Martin Lee doesn't feel complete without getting revenge on Osborne for what he did to him. MJ wishes she was a more active reporter instead of on the sidelines. Miles is trying to find his own strength after failing to save his dad. And Peter Parker and Otto Octavius are stuck feeling that they could be, that they can do better than who they are at this moment. What does it mean to be better? For Peter, it's obvious. He wants to be a better protector of New York, taking on all the responsibilities that come with being the only superhero in it. Because the Avengers are busy being in a bad game. Every fault, every setback, he takes the blame for himself. Himself. He blames himself for letting Jefferson Davis die, he tries to take down Martin Lee on his own, he tries to fight the Sinister Six by himself, he is constantly trying to save the city all alone, because that's how it's been for almost a decade. Peter over the course of the game learns to accept that for as amazing as he is, he can't keep taking on these responsibilities alone. He has to rely on MJ and Miles for help, and he doesn't have to be the one to save everyone. Don't get me wrong, he still has to be a hero, he has to save the day, especially against a guy with metal arms and negative powers. However, in order to be better, to be be greater, he has to accept help and start letting people in. Otto is almost a parallel to Peter. Both are trying to use their gift of knowledge for the betterment of society in conditions less than ideal, and struggling with the power and responsibility of it all. For Otto, his power is his mind, not his body. A rare disease is causing his motor functions to not work, leaving his brain intact. He wants to be better than his failing body, to still contribute to the world and not let his disease, his situation, define him. However, Otto has another problem. Norman Osborn. Thanks to the neural interface Peter helps create for the arms, influencing Otto's emotions and mood, it amplifies the seething, justified hatred of Norman Osborn to the point of breaking all the villains out of the raft, releasing Devil's Breath all over New York, and causing havoc all because of Oscorp. To Otto, being greater means to get one over those who stood in your way, to feel superior after a lifetime of being weaker. Peter walking away from Octavius and deciding not to waste a cure in Aunt May are the final steps the character takes to be greater. He can't save everyone, he has to let go sometimes, but he also doesn't have to go through it alone. He has friends, loved ones, and at the end of the day, he's Spider-Man. Oh yeah, also the, the DLC's pretty good, but uh, we don't talk about Hammerhead. We, we, we don't.
Technically a sequel to the first game, Spider-Man Miles Morales is a more streamlined game compared to its predecessor. The story is around 7.5 hours, the map is mostly the same as before except it's the winter holidays and the Harlem District has received an update in order to reflect Miles' new home. By far the biggest improvement Miles Morales does compared to the first game is its traversal. While the swinging is faster-ish thanks to the power of the PS5, Insomniac also took the time to change a couple of things about how you travel through the city. The trick system from the first game has been completely reworked to holding square and picking a direction on the left. Stick. Not only is this more responsive than the PS4 game, the animations are much more expressive and actually lead to swinging. Miles is a lot more youthful, more acrobatic, and has exaggerated swagger of a Okay, 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 I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it was a joke, it was a joke, I made it, it was a joke, I'm sorry, I'll stop. I'll stop, I swear. Is that a chainsaw? On top of movement, the new Venom abilities give Miles a certain edge over Peter. Since Miles' gadgets are only limited to four, Miles' bioelectricity powers let you deal a lot more damage in a wider area. To make the grind to complete crimes and districts faster, the Hero app lets you replay side missions as well as just spawn in new random crimes, which is nice so you're not waiting for the next crime to pop up like in the last game. Some cool minor changes like the neon light art style is cool, Miles' new haircut is way better than his old one and his new one if we're being honest. And overall, it's a solid improvement over the first game. You would expect a streamlined, more tight game would lead to a more focused story. And you do, with a bit of a caveat. Something really funny happened in between the events of the first game and this game coming out related to the general audience's opinion about Miles Morales. Now, I am not saying that a certain Oscar award winning animated movie that was received very well changed how Miles in the game is characterized. What I am saying is that it is a really funny thought experiment and if you think about it, a lot of this game's story makes more sense. Regardless, much like the first game, the tagline for this game, Be Yourself, also is the core of the narrative. Miles has to try and not compare himself to Peter and find his own way of being Spider-Man. The side missions do a really good job at showing that change. These missions not only have their own fun stories that are brief and get you connected to the citizens, but also follow a connected mini-story about protecting Harlem. The first game's side missions, while fun, were just kind of thrown in there, so it's nice to see what I'm doing actually matters. The main story, on the other hand, while still a really good Spider-Man story, isn't the most original. Sorry. Not even Uncle Aaron and Miles' dad's terrible, god-awful beats can hide the fact that the plot of this game is as if they took the first game, cut the fluff, and just put it in this game. Now this can be seen as a valid criticism, feeling like Insomniac just rehashed what worked in the first game and not coming up with something more gripping and original. But to be honest, I don't see the plot being derivative as a bad thing. I'm the kind of guy that can just eat up a familiar story as long as it's executed and told well and with genuine care. And for the most part, Spider-Man Miles Morales does exactly that. Sure, Simon Krieger is just a paper thin character played by Troy Baker, and Finn and Miles' friendship doesn't really hit the mark for me, but at least I'm not bored by what's happening on screen. At the end of the game, when the people you helped in the side mission see Miles and help hide his secret from the news, saying he's our Spider-Man, that hit me emotionally. That's what Miles the Spider-Man is all about. If Peter is the amazing wall crawler swinging high up in the sky, Miles is the one on the ground, looking out for the community he protects. This isn't putting each of them in a box, because at the end of the day, they're both Spider-Man. But this difference is what makes Miles Morales his own Spider-Man. And that's pretty cool. Insomniac are two for two on great Spider-Man games, and from what we've seen with Spider-Man 2 coming out next month, it looks like they're due for another slam dunk. Of course you can have some gripes with these games, nothing is perfect, but it's hard to deny that the people over at Insomniac love Spider-Man, and are putting their all into making sure their stories about the legendary hero that means so much to others around the globe are told the best way they possibly can. And if you ask me, that's amazing.